Okay, balancing equations. This is a very important skill in chemistry, in the language of chemistry, to allow you to communicate the reactants and products involved in a chemical reaction. It will be crucial to be able to balance equations successfully in order to do stoichiometric calculations um, later in your study of chemistry. So you may recall the law of conservation of mass, perhaps doing a reaction and observing that the mass of reactants equals the mass of products. That mass is conserved, it's neither created nor destroyed in a chemical reaction. So what does this mean for the actual equation? Well, what makes up the reactants? Well, the atoms that make up the hydrogen particle here make up the hydrogen gas particle and the atoms that make up the chlorine particle, the Cl2 particle here, and together all of these atoms make up the mass of the reactants. So similarly we have that on the product side. So ultimately to connect the law of conservation of mass to the idea of a balanced equation, we have to ensure that the number of atoms of each element on the left hand side of the arrow equals the number of atoms of each element on the right hand side. And in this way we because the atoms are the mass in the reactants and the products, we make sure that mass is conserved. So you'll see here that I have the molecule of H2 and the molecule of Cl2, and that when bonds are broken, when these bonds are broken and the same atoms recombine, we form products of HCl. And it turns out that with the two hydrogen atoms over here in the one molecule, that makes two hydrogen atoms available to bond with the two chlorine atoms and to make these product particles. So let's be clear about terminology. This piece here is an atom, right? And this is an atom. Collectively, collectively, this particle is called a molecule. And it's called a molecule because there are atoms covalently bonded. If there's more than two atoms, that's okay, but there needs to be at least two to form this cluster. So what's the significance of the red number that I've written out in front here? Well, first of all, these numbers out here are called balancing coefficients. and they indicate the number of molecules. So we're seeing here that there is one molecule of H2. And you can see here that there is one molecule of Cl2. And what do we notice with the balancing coefficient on the product side here? That there are two particles or two molecules of HCl. So there's one here and a second one here. So notice that the number of atoms of hydrogen, so the white pieces on the left side, equals the white pieces on the right side, and the same with the green. So we're maintaining the law of conservation of mass. Now, it would not be correct uh, to, instead of putting a 2 here, it would not be correct to change the subscripts of HCl to H2Cl2 in order to make them match. And that's because that would be changing the actual particle. We would then need to have two hydrogens and two chlorines all in a particle together somehow. Okay, so this would not be correct. The formula of hydrogen chloride is HCl. And so we need the formula of the substance to be correct according to nomenclature rules. And so we will X out this Cl2 here, and I'll just quickly replace or rewrite this with the 2HCl. So again, the formula describes the actual particle, and the coefficient in front is indicating the number of each particle. Now, Maybe you don't have a modeling kit at home. Maybe there's some Lego lying around or um, anything. You could use paper clips or any object, but you'll see here I've used Lego, and it might be a little bit tricky to tell, but there is two pieces, 
two orange stuck together here. So there's your two hydrogen atoms and two blue pieces stuck together. There's the two chlorine and you can see that they're forming two HCl. Okay, so I'm asking you based on this modeled equation to write the balanced equation that I'm representing in these photos. So pause the video and write the balanced equation that's represented by the, these models. Okay, so hopefully you came up with two hydrogen particles plus one O2 produces two H2O. And you can see the pictures here. All right, another important skill for balancing equations is being able to count the number of atoms of each element in the formulas, in the compounds as they're provided. So where do we look for that? Well, these subscripts. So we can see here that there are two hydrogen atoms and two oxygen atoms. So go ahead and count the number of atoms of each element in each compound for B, C, and D, and then check back with the video. Okay, so you'll see here that I filled in the subscript of one for the P because it's omitted in the formula. So we have three Na, one P, and four O. We have one carbon, Three H's here plus this one makes a total of four in this compound and one oxygen. We have one calcium, one nitrogen inside the brackets but a two outside so two times one gives us two nitrogen and two times three gives us six oxygen. Okay, so being able to count the number of atoms of each element in, in a compound is a very important basic skill for balancing. Now, what about when you put a balancing coefficient <clears throat> out in front of those formulas? How does that change the count of each atom? Okay, well, essentially we are doubling or tripling the, the particles, and therefore we can use multiplication to count. So 2 times 2, there are 4 H's. 2 times 2 here, there are 4 oxygens. 3 times 3, there are nine sodium. Three times one here, there are three phosphorus. Three times four, there are 12 oxygen. Two times one for the carbon. Three, two times three is six, plus two times one, so six plus two, there are actually eight hydrogen. And two times one, there are two oxygen. 3 times 1, 3 calcium, 3 times 1 times 2, 6 nitrogen, 3 times 3 is 9 times 2, 18 oxygen. Okay, I'll just make a comment about the sodium phosphate here, the Na3PO4. Often these compounds are in double displacement reaction patterns, and that means that the and you'll notice this when you learn about types of reactions, but that means that the phosphate package here, which there's one of, is present as PO4 on the left side of the arrow and on the right side in a different product. And so if you wanted to count the number of phosphate ions, that would be okay also. You may find that helpful. So it may be helpful to think of this as 3Na and 1PO4, so one group of PO4. Again, you need to see the whole equation, and if it's a double displacement reaction pattern and that polyatomic ion stays together, you may find that easier. Okay, so let's move now into balancing equations. If you find this a very difficult concept, you can definitely start out by drawing little Lego pieces or drawing the diagrams and just figuring out how many of each you need to draw in order to make the left side equal the right side. Um, I'm going to show a table to start. Basically, I'm going to find the arrow and draw a squiggly line here to clearly separate the left side of the equation from the right side. And then I'm going to list the elements that I see. So I see hydrogen and bromine as I read across from left to right. So hydrogen and bromine. And it should be the same elements on the right side. If it's not, there's a typo in the question. Okay, now I'm going to count the number of atoms of each element that I see, but I'm going to bounce left and right across this table 
Okay, as opposed to counting down the left side and then making the right side the same. I'm going to bounce left and right. Now, as a general rule of thumb, as a general rule, we do metals and then non-metals, leaving hydrogen and oxygen until the end. Now, why do we leave these two till the end? Well, in many equations, these atoms show up in two or more different reactants and products. <clears throat> and that will make it more difficult to determine their coefficients. And so we look for clues by balancing the other, the metals and the other non-metals ahead of time. In this case, hydrogen is only showing up once on the reactant side and once over here on the product side. And so really, at this point, it's, it's not going to affect it. So I'll just balance in order the way I see it. So I'm counting here, and I see there are two hydrogens. So I'll do the left side with two hydrogens. Now I come over to the right side and see that there's only one hydrogen in this formula. So by multiplication, I need to multiply that one by something in order to equal the two. And in doing so, I figure out that that must be two. One times two would equal two. The number that's underlined here is the coefficient. So that's what I need to put up here. And if you're checking, two times one would be two hydrogens. So hydrogen is balanced. Now I check the bromine. So I look on the left side and I see that there are two BRs just by looking here. And I come over to the right side and I see that there's one BR, but I'm paying attention to the fact that I've already put a coefficient out there. Two times one means that there's actually two BRs already on the right side. And so by balancing the hydrogen, it turned out that I balanced the bromine. And that will happen often in these equations, but you still need to check. Now, just to be clear, the fact that the hydrogen has two on this side and two on this side means the fact that those are the same numbers means that hydrogen is balanced. Bromine also happens to have two on the left side and two on the right side. These numbers here, this two and this two, do not need to be the same. What matters is that there's the same number of bromine atoms on the left side and the right side. The same number of hydrogen atoms on the left side and the right side. So you'll see that as we approach this next example. Now, I, when I wrote out the rest of these examples, I didn't put the blanks there because I want you to be able to notice where to put the blanks. We definitely put balancing coefficients in front of formulas. So never insert a coefficient in the middle of the formula. Okay, so I spot the arrow and notice that it's right here. Turns out I have one reactant and two products. Okay, so I list the elements that I see on the left side, K, C, L, and oxygen. And when I look at the right side, I notice the same ones appear. Now I start counting. There's one potassium here, and I bounce over to the right side, and there's one potassium there. So that's balanced. Then I look at chlorine. One chlorine here and one chlorine on the right side. It's balanced. Then I look at oxygen. Three oxygens on the left side, two oxygens on the right side. That's not balanced and it turns out I'm going to need to multiply both sides by, by numbers in order to make the, them equal. It turns out three times two and two times three would equal six. <clears throat> and that will make those oxygens balanced. So the coefficients then are the numbers that were on the line. So two here and a three over here. Now, how did I know which blank to put the three on? Well, I was balancing oxygen. And so where is the oxygen on the right side? That's where I need to put the three. Now, by putting the coefficients in front, we've changed the count of the other atoms. So the two out here now makes there be two potassium and two chlorine. So I need to be aware of that. There's now two here. So I come over to the right side and realize that I've got to double the right side in order to get two Ks and two Cls. So you can keep working these equations through by showing the table like this. Or if the numbers are starting to come to you a little easier, you can approach it with the multiplication, so counting and multiplication. So I'm going to look on the left side and I see 1 mg. Scan over to the right side, I see 1 mg. Magnesium's balanced. And I see one hydrogen here and two hydrogens here. So I'll need a two here to balance the hydrogen. 
In doing so, 2 times 1 is 2, and that's the same as the hydrogen on the right side. Now I notice the chlorine actually has 2 times 1, 2 chlorine, and I come over and see that there's 2 chlorine. And so this equation is balanced as is. So you don't need to show rough work. You just need to be able to get the coefficients correct. Okay, so I'm going to s scroll up here, and you can copy down the next few examples and give these a shot. Check back with the video when you're done. Okay, so to move through this, I have one calcium here and three on the right side. So I'm going to put a three here so that three times one is three. Now, I notice that the chlorate, the ClO3, that's in brackets right here, is still together on the right side. So actually, this will be easier if I balance it according to the chlorates. So I'm going to look at this two outside and say three times two. There are six chlorates. There's really one here, so I'm going to need a six out front so that six times one will be six. So three times two on the left side, six times one on the right side. Now by putting that six there, I have now shown that there are six sodium. So I'm going to come to the left side and I notice that I have three. So three times two would be six sodium. What does that do for the phosphate? Well, there's two times one, there's two phosphate, and on the right side I have two phosphate. So three, two, six, one, there's our coefficients. Part E, I see hydrogen showing up right here and right here. So in two different reactants. I also notice oxygen is showing up here and here, two different products. Those atoms are going to be difficult to balance, so I'm going to make sure I do the lithium and the sulfur first. So as I look at the lithium, I see there's one lithium here and two on the right side, so I'll put a two here. Now I fix that coefficient. Okay, now what about sulfur? I see that there's one sulfur here and one sulfur here, so I'm going to keep those the same. They are the same. Now I'll check hydrogen and oxygen. So there's two H's here. And when I multiply 2 times 1, there's 2 H's here. So that's a total of 4 hydrogens. I come over to the right side, and I need a 2 here so that 2 times 2 will be 4 hydrogens. Now I check the oxygen. 4 oxygens here. And 2 times 1, there are 2 oxygens there. So I have 6 oxygens. I come over to the right side, and I see that there are 4 oxygens there, plus 2 times 1 plus 2 oxygens on this side for a total of 6 oxygens. And so the equation is balanced 1, 2, 1, 2. Moving on to F. Now we're into combustion reactions. So I look at the, definitely recommend carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen as your order of balancing here. 1 carbon, 1 carbon. Okay, four H's come over here. I see only two, so two times two is four. Now, notice that the oxygens show up in two different products on the right side. And if the carbon's going to stay the same, then that means I'm leaving this, you know, this methane had a one in front and this is left as a blank or a one. So I'm fix I've fixed the number of oxygens here. There's two on from the CO2 and two times one, there's two there for a total of four. So I can come back to this side. I notice that the CH4 doesn't have an oxygen, so all of the oxygens, all four of these oxygens, have to come from the O2. And so I put a 2 here because 2 times 2 is 4. If you haven't tried example G, I suggest you try it first before listening to me explain it. And I'll just caution you that if you get to the point where you're trying to figure out the coefficient for the O2 and it's not working out nicely, then erase all the coefficients that you've started with and start back here with a 2, okay? And then carry it through in the order of carbon, hydrogen, then oxygen and see that it works out well for you. Okay, so I started with the two carbons, one here, one times two is two. Then I check the hydrogens and I see six, so two times three will be six. Now as I check my oxygens, two times two is four, and 3 times 1 is 3, and I realize, oops, that's 7 oxygens. I'm not going to get 7 oxygens out of this O2 because I'll need to have an even number. So I'm going to erase everything I just did and start back at the beginning where I was originally looking at the carbons.
And in looking at the carbons, I'm going to now start with a 2 here. So 2 times 2 is 4 carbons. So I come over to this side, and coefficient is 4. Now I check the hydrogen. 2 times 6 is 12. Come over here, 6 times 2 is 12. Then I check the oxygens. On the right side, 4 times 2 is 8, and 6 times 1 is 6. 8 plus 6 is 14, and that leads me to 7 times 2. So that works not just in combustion reactions, but in other equations too. So if you find that it's not working to balance with, uh, with your starting point, leaving that coefficient blank or as a 1, if, if in the end it doesn't work, then erase and start with a 2 there and see if that works for you. Okay, good luck.